We're going to move straight to Dr. Burnett's presentation. Uh, Dr. Burnett will be presenting publishing about parental alienation, how to overcome challenges, and disseminate knowledge. William Burnett, MD, is the founder and president of PASG. Dr. Burnett, a professor emeritus at Vanderbilt University School of Medicine, has testified as an expert in forensic psychiatry about 300 times in 24 states. Let's give a hand to Dr. Burnett. So it's nice to see you all. Uh, one of the themes of this weekend has been the prolific advances in publishing and research and the scientific basis of this topic. But, uh, and you just heard all about it from Dr. Lorandos, but we need to move on. The, the, but my point here is we need to keep it up. And those of you who are, are in graduate school or beginning and are even established and you're thinking about publishing about this topic, I have some ideas about how to do it. And I realize it's, it's a little bit late, so I want to explain to you the outline for my presentation, which I hope is done in a way that will make you alert. I wish I had the music for this, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Do, do you, do you, you know, the, no, the music, you can kind of hum it. I kind of, anyway. So let's start with the good. Now, what I'm talking about here are journals. I'm talking about how do you get published, and so I'm discussing it in terms of what journals are good to uh, submit things to, and why are they good, what journals might be considered bad, and what journals are ugly, and I'm going to give you specific examples and name names for these categories. So let's think about the good. So the Journal of Family Therapy was founded by one of our founders, Richard Sauber, and he was the editor for many, many years, and he was a friend of this topic very closely, and he published many articles about this topic, and this was an example of an article published in that journal by Richard Gardner about differentiating parental alienation syndrome from bona fide abuse. Famous article. So here's another article, here's another journal that we consider friendly. The Journal of Divorce and Remarriage has three people on it who are authorities on the topic of parental alienation. By, I mean, there are three on the editorial board, Amy Baker, Florence Caslow and Richard Warshak. Uh, I think you, you probably know Amy and Richard. Florence Caslow is a pretty famous psychologist, and she was the president of the American Psychological Association. Um, and she um, had direct family involvement with, this, with parental alienation. Not herself, but she had a family member. Um, and she wrote a book about it. So it's not a secret, I'm telling you, her brother was alienated from his children, and there's a whole book about it, so it's not like it's a secret. But my point is that the editor, the editorial board of this journal includes people who are extremely knowledgeable about this topic. So this is a good journal to think about. In fact, here's an example. Gina Rowlands was a presenter at this meeting, and this is her famous article about the measurement tool that she developed the Rowland's Parental Alienation Scale was published in this particular journal. So here's a journal I like because this journal was published by the organization that I'm very involved with, the uh, American Academy of Child and Adolescent Psychiatry. <clears throat> it's, uh, it's a premier journal for psychiatrists. It's the most widely read journal in the world for child and adolescent psychiatrists. So this would be a nice journal to get published in. And we, we accomplished that uh, actually a few months ago, that when we published this article about the five-factor model for the diagnosis of PA, it was in this journal. That was a big event. And it was the first time that 
a, an article specifically about parental alienation was published in a mainline psychiatric journal. I, I should mention something. This is breaking news. I think you'll hear more about this later. We're a little concerned about the terminology. And we've been thinking about whether the, the phrase, the five-factor model, is the right term. And so Dr. Baker and I, and to some extent Dr. Lorandos, have been thinking about this. And so we're thinking about calling it the Baker model. And one of the reasons for that, if you're a psychology, you probably know this, there's already something in psychology called the five-factor model. It has to do with personality traits. And there's been a little bit of flack about it, of us using a term that's already in use, blah, blah, blah. So anyway, we're, we're putting some thought into renaming it. And so you can kind of just think, you can say that you heard it here first. Anyway, here's another uh, really uh, prestigious journal published by the American Psychological Association called Psychology, Public Policy, and the Law. And we know the editor of this journal, Michael Lamb, he's friendly to this topic, and he's published several articles. In fact, here's one by Richard Warshak. You, do, do you all remember this a, a couple years ago, uh, having to do with false positive um, diagnoses of parental alienation? So, um, the editor, um, Dr. Lamb, he's not, He's not an authority on this topic, but he's friendly to this topic. And this is, an, this is a very prestigious journal of the APA. So th these are all the good. I'm going through these because these are the good, the good journals to think about. And they, this, and oh yeah, I already said this, so it published. And another good example is what you've just been hearing about from Dr. Lorandos, this other wonderful journal of the APA called Developmental Psychology, that they published the article that you've just been hearing about about the scientific status of parental alienation. So those are some good examples. Oh, here's one more. Uh, I, I like this one because I'm on the editorial board of the Journal of Forensic Sciences, and so that helps somewhat, simply because if I send an article in, at least the editor knows who I am, so sometimes that's helpful. But this is also an interesting journal because this organization is not a psychology organization. This is a multidisciplinary forensic organization, for, by multidisciplinary, I mean they have the fingerprint people, the blood stain people, the dentists who do, do dental forensics, the psychiatrists, the psychologists, and so it's an, interesting, it's an interesting journal with a lot of gory pictures in it from autopsies. But they published the uh, research that Amy and I did. You know, we developed the um, the five-factor model, and then we wanted to see if it was acceptable. So we surveyed uh, a number of people who do custody evaluations, and we asked them, do you agree with our definition of alienation? Do you agree with our definition of estrangement? Do you agree with our definition of the five-factor model? And so uh, that got published in that journal. I mean, it seems like a slightly odd journal for a, a highly psychological article, but, but it publishes. It publishes psychology art articles. Okay, one more. This is the last one, which I hope you have heard about two or three times already this weekend, the European Journal of Parental Alienation Practice. As you, I hope you know, it came out last week. It was launched, the first issue of this journal. <clears throat> and it's a joint project of our friends in Ireland um, and our friends in Malta. And they've done two important things. First of all, they're the people who give an, a, 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 uh, an accreditation, a certificate of training in parental alienation. They've done that for a couple of years. And they're about to launch a master's degree program in parental alienation, the first in the world. And now to complement that, we have the journal. And uh, you can see it online and um, I'm, I, gee, I meant to bring the hard copy and show you, but it really exists. So what's the whole point of this? So I hope you all write articles. We need to keep this up. Uh, and, and go for one of these. Uh, the, the good, what I'm classified as good. The, the friendly journals, they're highly rated. 
but uh, you know, be prepared to try again because you're, you're inevitably going to have articles rejected almost always, and you, and you usually have to shop around a little bit. Um, Demos mentioned the peer review process. The peer reviewers are very, very helpful most of the time. Occasionally, they're not. I sent in an article to a journal, and it, I got a one-line peer review saying, this is of no value at all to this field, or something like that. But other peer reviewers are very, very helpful, and they read the darn thing line by line, and they get very good advice. So take their advice seriously. I have a comment about make lemonade from lemons. I'll give you a quick example. Oh, a broad example is, as you know, there's a lot of negative stuff published about parental alienation, a lot of false information. And a lot of times, if, if that happens, you can write in and complain to the editor, and he'll say, well, send us your article. And I've done that two or three times, where I, I, I'm invited to counteract the bad article that had just been published, and once or twice, they're published back to back. In other words, I hear about it, and, and I send in a complaint, and, and I end, we end up having the, the two articles published in the same issue back to back. So that's what I mean by lemonade from lemons. And another example of that, I told you I got this article published in the American Journal of Child and Adolescent Psychiatry, or the Journal of the American Academy, whatever. So that came about because I had sent the editor an, a previous article that was very large and very detailed and very sort of uh, uh, nuanced, and, and it, it wasn't what he was interested in. It was too much information. And so he rejected it, and he said, hey, why don't you write a commentary, which is a short article? And I said, do you really mean that? And he said, yeah, sure, write us, write us an article of something you're interested in about parental alienation. It's an interesting topic. And that's how I got that one published, the one I told you about the first time it's ever been published in a mainline psychiatric journal. That was based on a bigger article being rejected. So that was a, that was a pretty good outcome. Uh, another idea is publishing, publish a rebuttal, which I mentioned. Please consult with your colleagues because uh, people get blind, so the people get narrow, uh, what do you call it, blinders on when they're writing their own article and sometimes they don't realize how it can be improved. Obviously, make presentations at these meetings. You get feedback. And I really encourage you to, to volunteer to be on an editorial board. And that These journals are frequently looking for people who have knowledge about specific topics. So if, if you like the journal, if you think it's nice, send a letter to the editor. And um, that's associated with uh, volunteering to do peer review for the journal. So that's obviously a good way to get your foot in the door. So, I've been talking about the good. Let's talk a little bit about the bad. Now, my definition of the bad uh, are publishing companies that at times publish things that we don't like. And in, in the examples I'm gonna give you, they're not totally bad, but they at times publish stuff that we disagree with. And I'll give you two examples. The first example is the publishing company called Rutledge. And as you may have heard, last year they published this horrible book called Challenging Parental Alienation. And we complained about it, we wrote a big analysis of it, we sent it in, we tried to get the book retracted, we thought it was so horrible, we tried to get the book retracted from publication, which has not happened. But I don't consider this company totally bad because this publishing company, Rutledge and Taylor and Francis, have published really, really good books. That Mandy Mathewson's book from, uh, you know, who does research on Australia, their book was published by this company, and there have been some others, and um, one recently, I kind of forget what it was. So the publishing company itself seems to be willing to publish several books that are favorable to parental alienation, and this one that was horrible. So that's why I, I don't call them horror. In other words, they're sound. it's a good publishing company that um, that's, does some good things, but somehow a bad one got in. And another example is, oh here, this is the uh, critique that 
uh, several of us worked on, which is a critique of that book published by Rutledge. Okay, and this, we sent this critique into them and to many other people, you all may have seen it. It's readily available online. So here's another example that might surprise you. I'm classifying the United Nations under the category of bad because of, uh, a few weeks ago, they published this document by the Human Rights Council of the United Nations that has hundreds of false statements about parental alienation theory. And I don't consider the United Nations totally hopeless. They do a lot of good things. And I'm hoping that in the future they publish some good things about parental alienation. But this is, a, I hope, an isolated example of a horrible product that they published a few weeks ago and that we're also fighting this. We wrote this up, this analysis of this report it's called the Report of the Special Rapporteur, which is standard United Nations lingo for special reporter. And uh, our hope here is that next week, when the Human Rights Council considers that report of the Special Rapporteur, that they will reject it. So the good, the bad, I consider them not horrible, but I put them bad. So what about the next category is the ugly? So the ugly is our journals that are dedicated to criticizing uh, parental alienation. So do you all know what journal that is? Think about it. Oh, actually, I'm going to come right out and tell you. <laughs> it's called the Journal of Child Custody. And their editor is Robert Geffner, and he's a dedicated opponent, opponent to PA theory. Now, I'm not complaining about him, and I'm, I'm not telling you anything secret. This is, this is well known, and he, and he is well known of, of being an opponent to PA theory. This is an example. Three or four times, this journal has published, uh, what do you call it, special issues where they, have, they collect several issues on this, to some articles on this topic. And he'll write an introduction to that issue and he'll say, you know, I thought that parental alienation was over with, I thought we have gotten rid of it, but sure enough, it's still bouncing back and, and we have to do something about this horrible thing that is affecting our families and our children. So Robert, and, and I, I've had some interactions with him, I mean, he, he is upfront doesn't like parental alienation theory. So everything I'm saying about him is not a secret. In fact, what's interesting about the journal, um, this publishing company make no representations or warranties whatsoever as to the accuracy, completeness, or suitability for any purpose of the content. It states that in every issue of their journal. And then I like this sentence, the accuracy of the content should not be relied upon. <laughs> so this is Robert Geffner's journal that publishes numerous anti-parental alienation articles. So I've set about to study this, and I collected all these articles that I could find in the literature for the last 30 years that oppose, parental, that criticize parental alienation, or that specifically make false statements or, or misinformation about parental alienation. In fact, that's my, my research study on, on my poster that's been up there today. It's called Scholarly Rumors, and I collected as many articles as I could find, and this is the, this is the, these are the articles. Each circle represents an article that has misinformation about parental alienation, and but what's interesting is it's the same misinformation, that there's a, there's a particular idea about parental alienation theory that's, that's been going around for years in which they misinterpret parental alienation theory. Basically, they say that, that what we would say that every child who rejects to see a parent is a victim of parental alienation. We don't say that. There are many reasons why a child might reject to see a parent, but that's misinformation that has been floated around, and there are 94 circles there and every one of them has that specific piece of misinformation. Do you follow that so far? These are chronological. The very first one is on the left-hand side, 
and a book is on the right-hand side. And so there are arrows, actually, uh, connecting all these be together. And the arrows show how one uh, author quoted or, or was quoted by various subsequent authors. And for instance, on the far left-hand side, th there are only outgoing arrows because that was the very first article. So people quoted her. And then on the far right-hand side are incoming arrows because these uh, books and articles on the right-hand side are quoting other people. The, the main point of this is that there's a continuous flow of misinformation from uh, over the last 30 years because they, the, the, this group of people quote each other over and over and over again. It, it's, it's an interesting study of the propagation of misinformation. So I showed you this big picture right now. Well, this, this one are, is, are all the journal, all the articles that I discovered. But what this one is, see the orange? The orange are those articles that have some connection to that journal that I've been talking about. Do you remember the name of it? The Journal of Child Custody. The orange circles are articles, the, 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 either the articles were published in that journal or the articles were published or written by one of the editors of that journal. So the, or, the orange stuff, which is about 40%, of all of these examples has some connection to that one journal. So that's important. In other words, this mis mis misinformation is not random. It's, it's, it's in a pattern, and, and it's related. It flows together. And I'm going to tell you who the article, who, who uh, that's how many uh, that were either in the journal or by members of the editorial board. I'm going to tell you who they are. These are the people who wrote the articles that have that same piece of misinformation. Now, this is not a secret either. This, this article that my research study um, on the poster, it lists all these articles and it has quotations, the relevant quotations. So there are 94 quotations and 94 references. And so I'm not telling you any secret or any gossip by, put, by telling you, but these are the people who wrote the articles with the same misinformation. In other words, the idea here is that misinformation collects among a certain group of people. It's not randomly distributed. It's in this pattern. So um, I, I guess I've been trying to convey to you the good, the bad, and the ugly. What I really encourage you to do is go for it. Be creative. Uh, as Demos mentioned, we're interested in both qualitative and quantitative research. And once you do, do you all know who Robert Ferrer is? He's the PASG archivist. He keeps track of all these publications. And if you publish something, let him know, because he'll put it in the newsletter, and he'll also put it in our database. So thanks for your attention, and uh, we, we wish you the best.